Going over offenses right here. So most of this game I'm just gonna go over like my plays on offense. I'm highlighting that slot receiver. He's abusing him to judge who I throw the ball to. He drops down, I go deep. So second with this next formation still. See what he's in. Same guy. The reason why I highlighted him, him lighting over my slot receiver is let me know that this is a man blitz and this underneath guy is coming after me. So I'm going to go ahead and audible out of what I'm going to run and run a streak comeback uh, special over here on the left. So I just didn't set the audibles. And then him come. You already know where we go with the ball. Just ways to make my offense simple, man. I don't try to complicate it. I see what the defense is. And I play into, and I set my offense based on what I'm, th what I think the defense is in. And if I'm right, I'm good. If I'm wrong, you know, bad things happen. So same thing here. Looking at all our blitz, we dump down. I think I'm gonna go no huddle. I don't know a few times I go no huddle, and it's just the look that he's giving me again. I'm gonna run a quick comeback here on the side. I guess he adjust, which he doesn't. So. Oh, he actually sensed uh, 97 after my running back, so I hit the dump down. So another setup here. See what he's in. It looks looking like ah cover three clouds. See those two guys on the left. That's just like misalignment. People don't pay attention to that. If I see that, I just automatically know it's cover. It's a cover three cloud. So I'm looking for the deep end here on the right side. I just need time to throw the ball so my line needs to hold. Play. See what he's in. Looking like man. All those overload guys on the top left. It's all man line defense could be man blitz in here. I'm gonna go ahead and call the audible here on the left on the right side of me. It's good. Just run a real quick comeback. There they come the blitz. It's the only way you can tell really is just the alignment. Some people can disguise it really well, but if you don't disguise it, that's what it looks like. So that's what I'm highlighting. Just then you know that I can, you know you can see it before you even throw the ball, so you know where to go with the ball. So you're not really panicking. Same thing right here on this guy on the left. Slot receiver. I'm trying to put him in conflict. So I'm going to put it, um, a, uh, what do you call it? A flat route. Just to pull him down so I can go up top. So that's just kind of what happens with zones. You're really trying to create a lot of stresses on the defense conflict where one defender has to decide on two different routes for what he's going to take. Um, <clears throat> but you got you to gotta be reading defenses. I mean, you got to be looking at your defenses. Some people do a better job of disguising than others, but mostly what I've seen online, people just don't. They're just coming out on defense and just playing, so you just kind of use that to your advantage. It's just probably, maybe they don't know, I don't know. But that's kind of just what I see a lot of. Same thing with this guy right here. This looks like one of those formations where these three guys on top could be blitzing. And if they are blitzing, then I don't like the route that Moore is running on the left, so I'm going to go ahead and put him in this quick drag. My quote-unquote slant. And I'm looking for any movement from that guy I just highlighted. If he goes to the middle of the field, if he attacks the line of scrimmage, I'm just dumping into more. Simple. It's like a quick run. And sometimes good things come out of come out of it, like this one. I didn't mean to score a touchdown. I just wanted to give a little five yards, but you know, he made a bad tackle. So in the end zone again. Let's right, see what happens next. Alright, turn them over here. What am I playing on offense this time? It's just an important game where I get him to like, start throwing the ball a little bit more than he wanted to. This whole game he was kind of running, 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 so now we got him in a position where he needs to throw now all day. Same thing right here. Looks like cover four to me. Which it is. Just wait for your time, wait for the receiver to come open. That's generally the holes in cover four. Those deep ends, those 15 yard ends. Or 10 yard, 12, 10 to 12 yard ends. It's like, but you need to know that that's cover four to be able to throw those. So just pay attention. Alright, let's get the ends on here. Let's see what happens next. 
I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impression. Still weren't seeing all verts out of like the four receivers to like the right side of the field. They just kept getting in trouble with running that same play over and over again. But yeah, I think you had any quit right there. So this Tennessee game, kind of the same thing. The reason I'm highlighting this play because he ran it like on his first drive. It's RPO. So you're going to see how I tried to cover it because I remembered it down, you know, as we kept on playing. So I'm just saying, you know, just remember that play. I'll come back to it later. So I'll just let him drive up field to see if he can score. Another RPO. Also remember this play too. It's a good play. The deep end. Watch the deep end. So you're going to see me try, when I see that formation again, I'm always going to be looking for that deep end and force him to do something else later. So that's two plays now you got to worry about. Out of uh, trips, you just ran just not a trip punch. Boom! So I, so I love Ed Jackson on my team, man. That guy helps me, saves me a lot of touchdowns. How he plays the deep middle of the field. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. Right, fourth down and three. He's gonna run the exact same play again. It's like the reverse whip on the right side of the field that comes across the middle. So I'm kind of just waiting for it here in the middle. My user. There he goes. It comes again. And he tries to throw one more time. And it's gonna pass. All right, man, back on offense. This is a high low read on the left side. Low is taken. Go high. Same thing here, same thing. The flood on the right side still is high low still. Low is given, take low. Just make the offense simple, man. Don't, don't complicate it too much. Run the boy here for first down. Like if you know what you're going to do before you snap it, it helps. It helps. It's supposed to just coming down and just snapping the ball and going. So. Same thing here. See how he's covering the deep end? Go ahead and take my loan, get out the way. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run back here. It's in the same flow concept here on the left. Yeah, I just happened to find a little window right there between the safety and the linebacker, or the safety, or whoever he puts that linebacker. And we will complete the pass. Again, the end zone here, and we up 7 zip. Alright. It's that punch again, so I'm going to be looking for the deep end now. As you can see, I just switched over. He runs the ball. It's just because he, he you know, hit me with that deep end earlier. I'm going to, if I see I, I that formation again, I'm always going to be looking for the deep end. But if I'm not the rest of the game, unless he shows me something different. Good play. He has two double ends, like that dragon, and it's like a deeper end that I was covering. So that, you know, I kind of gave that up. Boy, oh, he had a deep a tight end and a deep pose on the sideline. He missed it. Let's see if he's going back to it again. Oh, he runs the ball. Alright. There you go. That's the same formation I was talking about earlier. You're going to see me switch over to the corner because I was thinking he was going to run another RPO. So I was waiting for it. But then when he snaps the ball... I think I dropped down the line of scrimmage and he wasn't running one. He just ran off a wheel up ahead of me. So, ah, but that's only two times he ran that formation all game. So I didn't have to worry about it. because he can run a lot of RPO. I go ahead and put a hard flats on the right side of the field and he blindly throws it over there without looking. And this is what happens. Just anticipating, kind of thinking about what he what he's been running all game and what I thought he was going to run on that down right there. Got me that pick. All right, this play right here, because you know he's been like kind of covering the deep end with his safety, so he's looking for the deep end. But I got a route for my tight end running a, a deep out, so he's gonna put him in conflict because he's gonna try to figure out who to cover, and he's gonna try to take my running my wide receiver more on the left. So you see, he's waiting for it. It comes in on the deep end, he's sitting on it, but then the tight end has him in conflict now, so he has to worry about two players. 
and there's like another play down you know down this video I'm gonna show another way like you know you beat him again with a double move but I'll show that later he's just in cover three right here it just puts that last safety in a, a, a cornerback in a confidence. He has to worry about two receivers on that switch. So. All right, let's see what's next. And the Titans' offense set to begin the drive, and their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. I mean, quarters right here. Play. Good read. Good way to find the open guy. The deep post. Oh, sorry, the deep end. That was the deep end. Yeah, the deep end. All right. They try again on first down. The handoff running left, Henry. I was doing a good job with him all day. Just sometimes, you know, he does what he does. But they're on the move, first and ten. Tannehill now to throw. See, I saw that whip. I'm trying to get out of it, but when I bumped him, I saw the flag. I just kind of stopped. I stopped playing. So you know, it doesn't really matter then. They're gonna give me a penalty anyways. So, you see, I keep like collecting my safety and pulling him down, and he keeps running the ball. So he's gonna run it again, and watch what he does because he sees me pull that safety down. Watch what he does. He's gonna see me pull that safety down, and pull that safety down, and watch what the safety does on this run play. See, how he comes down for it. So he's gonna go with no huddle because he thinks I have him <laughs> like blitzing, but I got him in the blue zone. So he's really covering the center of the field. He's gonna do a play action down the middle of the field, and then I'm waiting for it. Trying to force it to Hopkins and it's intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it. All right, back on offense. And the Bears are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. Throw it on first down, but give them credit. They recover. Yeah, I was trying to run out uh, like a slant RPO to uh, to more. I thought he was blitzing, but uh, I think I stayed back, so I, you know, I didn't see him. He was hiding behind that lineman. But he more would have been open. I just didn't see 21 at all. So that was just a mistake of mine. I didn't see him at all until I threw the ball. Oh man, 21 sitting right there. The guy who threw the interception a lot of times, he just gives all right, gets in the end zone. He had the ball the whole first quarter. That's why I didn't, I didn't really start off the first quarter because he was just running the ball a lot and throwing short passes. So he kind of hit up the whole first quarter. That's why this game is kind of moving fast. I think we're already in the fourth already. So here's, the, here's the play right here. I ran earlier with the tight end. And he still has, he's still looking for the deep end, but in the tight end, you know. I ran that earlier, he got a big game, he's just, you know, not seen it yet. Here's the other conflict play. Because the way the tight ends run this whip, he's going to fall thing the tight end is the guy coming in. He's going to feel back when he runs his whip and look for a post that he thinks my slot receiver is running, but he's running a double move to the outside. So, pretty good play. So he chases the tight end at first, then he sees the R1, he goes after R1, but R1's running on a double move to back to the outside. I love that play. That play gets me huge yards. Because nobody ever expects a slot receiver to run that route. Not like, not like people don't know about it, but nobody really uses it like that. <laughs> so I, I love it like that play. If you got a really good route runner, they really sell it. Like, they run in a post and then it shoots back outside. He can get some really good yards, especially against cover three. He can get some really huge gains. Alright, we kind of click it. It goes uh, it's Jackson again. Saving me in the middle. See me again on left as user. Oh, I almost got it. <laughs> almost. I was waiting for the deep post, which is what I'm still doing here. I'm still kind of waiting in case he runs the deep post up the, up the middle. Obviously, I'm waiting for it. There goes the post. That's the reason why he has to keep the ball because I know he ran it earlier, so I'm just making sure I cover it this time. To throw is Tannehill. Because I'm holding that post, he has to look for something else. Like, like I said, I'm not saying nothing else is open. I just don't want him to throw that deep post. So, Let's see what he runs here. Third and twelve. All right, fourth and twelve. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Okay, leave nobody open. Turn one down. All right, on this play here. 
Yeah, I know he's in cover three. I can kind of figure when he bumps me, I can kind of tell this is cover three look. So I just send my slot receiver triangle on the streak because the outside corner has to cover him and he's not going to be able to keep up. I've tried this online doing while I'm streaming. I think I was over to overthrow. So that's probably one of the first times I actually connected on that pass. Yeah, usually I overthrow it. It's probably the first time I think I could have gotten that pass. So I got him on cover three. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. But probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. That double move, he's trying to run on me, but I got somebody sitting out on this. And this guy right here, he played quarters, cover four, but he, I don't think he has match turned on. So because of that, you see that, that slot receiver, Mooney? He just gets out there because you know, he doesn't have match turned on, so nobody's really covering, you know, covering the outside. So I'm able to run it twice in a row, and he still doesn't cover it. And you say he says cover, uh, cover four quarters. He doesn't have match turned on because one of those dead purple should be should be getting out there. But the only do is just they just flare out to the flats, and they don't really cover the top. So that's what I'm basically doing here by sending more up the up the field, so that safety needs to stay up there, so I can get Mooney out here. The outside corner is gonna, you know. He's going to flare up, going to go up, see? So he just leaves that little vacancy right there. That's why you need, like, turn match on when you're going to play, like, uh, especially, like, overloaded, like, uh, receivers like that on one side of the field. They play a little bit better, like that That purple underneath will match uh, whoever the underneath is, so one of those two safeties can pick up that dude. Oh, that's just going to be open all day. So just be mindful of that when you play defense. Just when you play quarters, just turn match on. All right, guys, it's ending here. <clears throat> just making these like short videos, kind of just give you like you know, when you see me playing online, it makes sense. When I'm doing some of the things I'm doing, because when I'm streaming, it's hard to explain or go over things when you only get one shot at it and you can't do a replay. So it's like these videos kind of help. So if you got any questions for me, just go ahead and hit me in the comment section. And I'll see you next time, fellas. I'll holla at you dudes later. Alright, one.